Hey folks, uh, today I want to talk about a, a scoped carbine course that I took. This happened a few weeks ago. I just, due to my travel schedule, this is the first time I've been in a place where I could, you know, sit down and talk about the course and what it was all about. So what it was, it was a, a two-day thing. It was taught by uh, Joe Dawson, that's Bruiser Industries on Instagram. And it was, uh, it was kind of designed for just to take, you know, a carbine slap a scope on it and kind of show guys what's possible and then give them a training pathway. And by show what's possible, I mean, shoot at a thousand yards with a five, five, six. All right. If you haven't done that before, which I hadn't like, that's, that's helpful just to understand like how all that works and then do some training exercises, some pro, uh, positional work and get just like an initial look at what, okay, what, how do wind calls work? Like how does ballistics work at, you know, at whatever distance. So it was, it was a course for that, like a very basic course for shooting a scoped carbine, which for me is good because I haven't done a whole lot with uh, that style of shooting, like shooting at distance like that. It's not something I really do. So it was like, you know, Hey, it makes sense. You should go take this, take this course and, uh, and try that stuff. So I did, the course was as advertised. I got a good look at like ballistics. Um, like how does, how does this stuff work? Basically? I mean, I couldn't recite it all for memory, but like I have a, a pretty good idea of the ins and outs of it. And then, you know, how does my scope work? Like how do we use a ballistics calculator? Like that kind of stuff. Like Got a good look at that, shot a little bit at distance, and uh, I think the most interesting part of the course was shooting at 100 yards on these two MOA circles, uh, where we were doing doubles, as a matter of fact. So shooting rapid fire pairs, like boom, boom, like that pace at 100 yards at a two MOA circle, like that was very instructive, and it showed me a lot about mounting and connecting to the rifle, even though the rifle looks a little bit different than what I normally shoot. So... I mean, as far as all that was concerned, the course was a success. Like I got what I wanted to out of it. Like I understand how to practice for that kind of thing. I got a basic overview of ballistics and like, uh, I mean, I, I got to use different equipment. So shooting a 308 at a thousand yards was a lot different than a 556. Shot a 6.5 Creedmoor again at, you know, thousand yard targets. That was also very instructive, very helpful, helps me understand like what this thing's all about, like the five, five, six, the limitations of it and where, you know, where it kind of shines. So shooting two, three, 400 yards, like 10 inch plates or whatever was not hard with this gun. Um, once got it zeroed and trued and everything, it was just smashing targets, but shooting at a thousand yards, obviously this really isn't the tool. It's just like, you can extend the range and shoot that far if you want. So anyway, all of that was good. All of that was, was good and helpful. So I want to talk a second about the actual rifle that I'm using. This, uh, if you've seen it on the channel before, it's the, the same arrow lower BCM upper that I normally use. I like the three prong device. The thing that's different about this gun is this is a 16 inch gun as opposed to a 14.5. Uh, so we just made the barrel a little bit longer. Um, even used the same stock that I would normally use. I just like just put the same stock on it. I, I could get a more precision -y stock, but I opted just to use the same equipment I normally use. I've also got a bipod on here. This is a nice one from Atlas. Now, um, the bipod was actually very useful for this course. Like one, the first day we shot at uh, a half scale IPSC target, a steel one at 750 yards, something like that. And for this part of the course, this, this bipod was excellent. We weren't shooting that uphill, um, so I could pretty easily get on, get on the target and shoot it effectively. So that was, that was nice. However, these legs only extend so much and they do about this. And the second day when we shot a thousand yards, my legs did not extend enough for me to be able to comfortably shoot at the target. Now we're still ultimately able to hit it. Um, but it was very like the just the way I was on the gun was extremely uncomfortable. Like uh, another guy had uh, a better bipod, like a th Thundercat, some something like that. I don't know. Some he had a really nice bipod that extended even more. It was even like more expensive than this one, and I was like, okay. Like I I see the limitation of this bipod now. So this is like a very good bipod for what it is. It it 
quickly comes off the gun. It's very adjustable, but it doesn't extend enough for what I was using it for. So I guess I found the limitation with that. Uh, the, the, the Vortex 1 to 6, this Razor, now a lot of people say this is the LPVO by which other LPVOs are judged. I would have been better off for the purposes of this course if I had more magnification. There's no doubt about it. Like, uh, however, the one to six like this, this is the LPVO that I would actually train with, like actually use. So it made sense in my head to go through the course with this. And uh, I would say it, it was better than I really expected. So this scope was at its weakest at 100 yards when I was shooting at the, the two MOA circles just because of how thick the reticle is in here. It's like it's pretty thick lines and it was just it plain just covered up what I wanted to shoot at, which was a little bit annoying. But how, however, like that was where it was at its weakest was like shooting groups on paper. When I was actually using the scope practically like, you know, two, three, four hundred yard engagement on targets like steel targets, there'd be a little, you know, the, the targets bigger than, you know, two MOA typically, not always, but typically it is. And, um, usually there's a wind hold. So I'm like holding off of it. So like the reticle didn't bother me at all when I was actually using the gun. It was just annoying to zero the gun on paper. I felt like I couldn't get the most out of it in terms of zeroing it just because of the size of the reticle. Again, that was just like, yep, that's when the scope's at its worst. Like two, three, four, 500 yards shooting at steel. This scope was perfect. It had plenty of magnification. And then obviously at, at some point, I just did not have the magnification that I wanted. Um, like shooting at a thousand yards, like this was this, I, I could shoot and maybe hit the target, but you know, a heavier caliber and, a, and more magnification was the ticket to hitting the target every time, uh, which is what I found out. But you know, not exactly a surprise. Overall, this is a very easy uh, scope to recommend just because it's like you can do so much with it. And uh, I do appreciate that about it. Now, the other thing, oh, and by the way, this is the uh, the BCM Cold Hammer Forge Barrel that I use in all my other guns. I think it's I think it's better than an MOA, I think, at least at this point. I haven't abused the gun too much yet. So there's one other piece of equipment which bears some discussion, and that's the ammunition, the PMC X-TAC Match 77 grain ammo. Now, the reason I bought this is because PMC ammo has always been good for me and always worked for me. And I was like, if I buy this, I won't go too far wrong. And I bought it without doing any research. I just bought it because I needed some ammo. Now, did the ammo work well for the course? Yes. The gun likes it. Um, it's a little bit light in terms of the velocity, which just adjusts, you know, at, at a thousand yards, that kind of stuff matters. But, you know, it's like 223 is not really that great anyway. It was just like, yes, it, it gets out to a thousand yards. Whatever. The ammo was fine, in my opinion. Is there better ammo? I'm sure there is, but the ammo was fine and did its job. Now, after I got this ammo, a lot of you guys pointed out like, hey, you should have gotten this or that or whatever. It's cheaper. This stuff over here is better, whatever. And I understand all that, but like, what I did was just like, okay, PMC, that's always worked for me. And I bought PMC ammo for this, for this course. And I spent a little more money than I would have if I'd done research. However, I did get ammo that functioned. So in my brain, this was a win. Like I'm happy with how the PMC deal went down. Now I have some AAC to shoot. I have some other stuff to try. Like, but like I said, in my brain, this was a success. The PMC was a win. Okay, so um, after the course, I left kind of thinking, you know, what do I want to do with this? It was definitely fun. Like I liked the the thousand yard shooting. I thought that was cool. Uh, now in here in Arizona, there's a place I can shoot a thousand yards daily. Like it would, I wouldn't require any setup for me. It would be very easy. There's just targets that are there and I can go shoot at them. Um, it's tempting to get a six, five Creedmoor and like, uh, train this dive into this. Um, but also looking at how much time I have, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe that's not a good idea this year. In any event, if I was going to train this type of stuff more, I think I'd be training at the hundred yard line on the two MOA circles. I think that that as a training pathway makes makes way more sense to develop your hard skills there and then deal deal with like reading the conditions and dealing with the wind and understanding ballistics. Like you almost just separate those things. Like the shooting mechanics you can handle 
without a lot of distance, but just on really demanding targets and do position changes and that kind of thing, and then separately work on field skills. So I'm tempted to take this kind of thing further, but looking at the time it would take and the money, I mean, the money's easier than the time. The time would be a problem because there's, there's only so much time in the day. So anyway, there it is, the scope carbine course. Uh, it was good for me. I learned a lot, um, and I'm happy to answer any more questions you guys have about it.